Ladies and gentlemen, my full thoughts on the AEW Double or Nothing pay-per-view. It was an awesome AEW pay-per-view. Especially for the first one with a full crowd of days place. All of the matches were great. Though I will say a few of them felt like the outcomers were obvious before. The NWA Women's Championship match was not going to change hands with it being on the buy-in. And it not being AEW's place to decide that stuff anyway. Now, likewise, the AEW Women's Championship match was, of course, changing hands because Sheeta made it to one year. She had her moment on Dynamite, though, admittedly, a short moment. My only grip was that the match was, it perhaps had one too many false finishes. It had way too many false finishes, man. Too fucking many. I haven't really felt that way about a match before, but it started to get that way here. Like with Rebuild smacking Britt and she somehow surviving. Other than that, Britt, of course, deserves to be a champion after all the hard work she put in. Sting and Darby were, of course, going to win. It's stunning, but the match was awesome, and I did appreciate that. I was thankful for that. After I had said something about it for an AEW Dark elevation. Yes, it was me. I was the one that said something about it all along. And nobody didn't know. Ethan and Scorpio now have matching gear. Ethan and Scorpio are likely still top five in the tag division ranking. And they need to bid their time while the Bucks are still heels. I will say the Bucks versus Moxley and Kingston. Was awesome stuff, but for a second it felt like it could have been Moxley and Kingston. But it did create a strong character beat for the Bucks to win because they stopped cheating and just did their moves. That simple. Now, I like the detail of Cause getting involved. I wonder if things circle back to where Cause joins Moxley and Kingston in an anti trio, in an anti elite trio. Cody and Ogogo was as expected with the wrestlers winning because this is wrestling. But, hey, him going to the extra mile to be AEW's Captain America or something is the same stuff that turned some people off to Cody a couple weeks ago. The Memorial Day message and honoring veterans is appreciated, but no more. USA versus world as a motivation for story, please. No more of that shit. Miro versus Archer was great, but I feel a bit of story got lost because it was a part of some kind of fan fest segment that I suppose was part of the countdown special on Saturday. Even so, the match was great. Miro gets heat for throwing a bag that obviously wouldn't have a real snake in it. <laughs> That's funny. And I am a bit surprised he retained. <coughs> Archer hasn't gotten much at all since joining AEW. So I thought this was that night. Maybe he'll get another shot at All Out or Full Gear. Since both were already advertised for when and where. <coughs> Jungle Boy winning was the right choice. He is young and supremely popular and no offense to Christian, but he gives any of the three in the world title match a much better match than Christian. However, Omega was another of the guaranteed winners of that triple threat, especially with Callus nearby. The heat on Callus was nuclear and Cassidy got one hell of a show. He definitely 100% did. Omega versus whoever he's facing in a couple of weeks makes sense. And then maybe we get Omega versus Cassidy one on one for a top level dynamite on the way to all out. Omega versus Heyman is still going to be a lot of people's pick for all out 2021. Now, bringing both their relationship and Heyman's personal AEW story full circle. But Cassidy has to get something at some point. Now, Stadium Stephanie 2 was awesome stuff. Just like last year, they said it wasn't going to be as goofy as last year. But, 
it was still plenty goofy with the repelling of the TIAA Titron and the artificial chair room moment. EMP and FTR beating up dark stairs, pretending to be bar barges. And so much of Jericho versus MJF. Hagger and World Load was the most serious fight of the four. Yes, I agree. With PNP versus FTR, a good set. It was cool to see Conan and all the, these other cameos, though. But in the end, it was clear that the inner circle would win because the pinnacle stood tall. And fans really like the inner circle. I can see why. They have good chemistry. They have very, very great, awesome, phenomenal chemistry. And it's not like them being together. Prevents them from going for gold. If anything, they should be even more focused on that with PMP going for tag. Hagger or Sammy going for TMT. Of course, Jericho going for the world title again. AW Double or Nothing was one of the greatest pay-per-views that AW has ever produced. I hope that will be the case for All Out and AW Full Gear. That's going to do it for this video, folks. If you enjoyed this video, hit that thumbs up. If you didn't, hit the thumbs down. Your thumbs up helps out the channel, helps out the live streamers, and most importantly, the videos. If you are new to the channel and want to see more videos like this and want to see more gaming and wrestling content here on the IWN channel, please hit that subscribe button, turn on that bell for notifications, and follow me on Twitter to never miss a single great tweet. And also follow me on Twitch at Ingram Wrestling News. All you got to do is type in IWN. All you got to do is type in Ingram Wrestling News in the Twitch search, and it should my name should pop up. Folks, thank you for watching this video. I will see you guys in the live chat for AEW Dark Elevation. Peace! My AEW Dark Elevation watch along will be live at 6.55 p.m. So be there before then. Peace. I'm out of here. Take care. Have a good rest of y'all's boring Monday.